Good morning, Fed Phoenix fan. How are y'all doing today? Well, I hope. So, I wanted to make a video on a topic that I found interesting. I actually got out the old calculator and crunched the numbers to make sure the information I'm giving you is, you know, the estimates I'm giving you are accurate. Um, so, I was thinking, you know, there's an email system for federal prisoners, right? Now, you don't have actual internet access. It's a very secure email system. And how it works is when you get to prison on your end as an inmate, it's called True Links. Um, for those you keep in contact with, it'll be called Core Links on their end. But you enter their email address and they'll get an email um, from Core Links and it'll say, you know, your name and that you're a federal inmate, maybe at what facility you're at. And we'll ask them if they can send, um, you know, to, to emailing back and forth with you, knowing that these emails are monitored. And if they accept that that invite, you know, to email with you, then now you can email with them, which costs them absolutely nothing. Um, but you as the inmate will pay 10 cents a minute to, uh, to, to read emails as well as to respond. Um, and mind you, these are not state-of-the-art, high-tech, great internet, amazing machines. You know, these are kind of not well taken care of, outdated. So there are probably going to be times where things are going to be kind of a little slow. And, you know, there's going to definitely be a handful of minutes that will be wasted just due to the poor technology, which for you is a handful of dimes. Um, and I was thinking maybe I should try to like, you know, like, you know, five or six people, you know, I should try to just, you know, talk to them through email versus snail mail versus regular postal letters. Because, you know, when you when you as the inmate or when the person in the free world sends you an email or you send them an email, it takes about two plus hours, sometimes more, for the other party to receive the email. And then when they respond, it takes another two plus hours for the other person to get the response. It's, it's a slow process, but it's much quicker than, you know, traditional U.S. Postal Service, right? But a postage stamp costs what? I don't know, maybe 50 cents, something like that. I think a book of, of 20 postage stamps is like 10 bucks. So I, I, I'm thinking it's like 50 cents, right? And mind you, when you receive a letter in the mail as an inmate, it costs you nothing. And you can take as long as you want and as many times as you want reading that letter and writing a response. And then the only expense is the out-of-pocket one-time expense for the postage stamp, which is 50 cents which is the equivalent of five minutes on the email kiosk. Now, mind you, there are usually a limited number of these kiosks as well inside the prison, and a lot of inmates wanting to use them. So anytime that there is a fight over resources or, or a limit of resources for something, there's always going to be conflict related to that, whether it be commissary, whether it be phone use, kiosk use, um, you know, if there's a limited number of a certain copy of book in the library or something, you know, that for some reason everyone's gotten an interest in. And you really want to avoid conflict, you know, obviously while you're incarcerated, to your greatest ability. One, to make your time go easier without the drama. And two, to, to minimize the risk of you getting caught up in some mess that can lead to more charges or take away your good time or whatever. So, now if you're thinking, because I was thinking this, 10 cents a minute's not a lot of money, you know. Uh, there's really no reason to split hairs over that, but I did the math. So let me enlighten you because I was like, whoa. So 10 cents a minute. Now let's say you use the kiosk twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening, and you're on the kiosk for about 15 minutes because you got to consider this is the time it takes for you to read, open and read individual emails and time to, you know, to open, you know, draft and send individual responses, right? That's 30 minutes a day you're on the email kiosk, which is going to cost you, the inmate, $3 a day. Which then, you know, at $3 a day, you're paying $90 a month. That is one and a half times my current cell phone bill, and I have excellent cell phone service. In a year, guess what that cost would be? $1,080. I'm going to prison for two years. So two years, if I just use the kiosk, twice a day, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the evening. When I come home in two years, guess how much money I have spent simply using the kiosk to read and respond to emails? $2,160. Are you clutching your pearls? I'm clutching my pearls. $2,160 is a sufficient amount of money because I already know where I'm moving when I come out. Like I've already, you know, kind of scouted out apartments and I have had, I've had the same landlord for like 10 years at, at two different properties. I have a really good rapport with him. So he'll be my landlord and he has affordable properties. 
but um that two thousand one hundred and sixty dollars could comfortably cover my first month's rent my deposit um basic furnishings a bed a couch a bistro set um for the kitchen you know very basic furnishings and probably i could throw in the couple hundred dollars it's going to cost me to get an android cell phone and my initial month of service so for what i've i would have i would spend simply emailing you know for 15 minutes in the morning and 15 in the evening if i had that type of money which i don't even think i would be able to afford that anyway but if i had that type of money if i simply don't do that just cut that out of the routine i would be saving enough to come home and be able to afford an apartment for myself and my youngest child and furnish it and get a cell phone and get it turned on that's a lot what what the equivalent of that money is is pretty heavy would be a huge 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 head start foot up whatever when i come home also that two thousand one hundred and sixty dollars could could you know relatively cover the cost of a used vehicle that is you know relatively reliable and insurance on it you know at least starting out and gas in order for me to be able to drive the two hours each way out of state it takes to go get my youngest child from from his his father so this could be 50 percent of the 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 literal cost of me having access to my youngest child when i come home from prison this could be a hundred percent of the cost of me being able to to not have to to, to live with family in crowded quarters and inconvenience the heck out of them and be a burden and be independent again in my own home with my own cell phone with furniture to sit on. So, you know, I definitely intend to use the email system solely for keeping in contact with loved ones who are out of the country because there are a few people overseas I'll be in contact with. And also for emergencies, you know, definitely my adult child and a couple of friends, you know, I'll have added to my, my kiosk thing. But that will be solely for the purpose of emergencies, for them to contact me or me to contact them in emergency only circumstances. Because the cost of that is crazy. Do I think I would even be able to, I'll be even, be even be able to afford to do it if I wanted to? No. And if I could afford it, would I much rather have 50% of what it takes to get a car or 100% of what it takes to get an apartment and furnish it and get a cell phone and get a cell phone turned? Absolutely. So if you're going to be going to prison and doing your time on a budget of any sort, you know, if you're not someone with, 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 you know, a lot of financial means, you really want to give a lot of thought to this whole email versus snail mail thing, because it is a night and day difference. If I write one letter a day, okay, then I'm spending about $30 a month on postage stamps versus $90 a month. On emails alone and of course even if you're doing emails you're still gonna have some snail mail so and I I think that $30 a month to be able to respond to letters will hopefully be something that is reasonable within my budget which means if I get five letters one day and two letters three days later and that week I got seven letters I'm still responding to I'm limiting myself to seven letters you know per week a letter a day so you know to keep things really you know roped in you know financially and and i just really wanted to point that out now you'll notice in the title of this video it's bidding on a budget i don't mean bidding like i give you three dollars i give you seven dollars <laughs> for those of you who aren't familiar with the term a lot of people call doing prison time doing a bid and how you do your time is is you know people bid differently or or in context, you could say, you know, my cousin's bidding really well, you know, staying out of trouble and things. So I'm going to title this video, Bidding on a Budget, you know, just, and I want to just explain that a little bit because I know some of my subscribers are overseas and uh, some of them have not been incarcerated. Some of them, like me, are about to be incarcerated for the first time and aren't, aren't really familiar with a lot of this terminology. So I just wanted to clarify that. But if you like the video, like the video. Feel free to subscribe, hit notifications if you'd like not notifications when new content drops. Um, as you all know, I will be documenting my incarceration journey um, as I have since my target letter, you know, but up until I go to prison and when I come home from prison, halfway house, reentry, rebuilding my life, that whole thing will be documented on this channel. So if you'd like to see new content when it drops, hit the notifications bell and you certainly will, as you all know, I'm going to prison for a couple years and during those couple years, I would not be able to make new content. So, um, 
you know, if you want to stay in the loop, you definitely need to hit the notifications after you subscribe. But, and uh, in the description below is my information. Um, if you'd like to write me while I'm incarcerated, if you'd like to email me before I become incarcerated um, for any reason, if you would like to, to donate to the channel via my Cash App or PayPal, you know, before I'm incarcerated, which is in about 11, 12 days, um, that's in there, you know, if you'd like to, to contribute to my prison survival, my emails, <laughs> you know, and, and hygiene and honey buns, um, you know, you can use the information in the description below my name, my inmate number to, um, to go online and be able to do so. So anyway, good day. God bless. I hope this, this video was interesting for some of you. It really blew my mind last night when I sat down and did the math on um, what financially would it mean for me if just... 15 minutes a day, you know, a couple times a day, I, I write and respond to emails. And, and really, in perspective, it is a goliathan, an overwhelming amount of money. And realistically, I don't even think I could afford it if I wanted to. Like, that's crazy. So, if you haven't given that any thought, don't go in thinking, oh, I'm just going to email everybody. It's quicker. It's easier. If you're on a budget, because you're probably going to be really shocked at how quickly the money on your books just evaporates into thin air. So, good day. God bless.